Uh-huh, I sure will. A uh, Good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. I was, uh, had my head down, and I was uh, thinking of what I wanted to say this morning, but uh, it, it, it kind of, uh, it's kind of be something I've lived for a long time. And, uh, you know, for a long time, you know, I had a lot of faith in people. You know, it's strange, too, because, you know, you know, um, my mother was a Sunday school teacher. So, of course, I grew up around it, knowing uh, scriptures and things like that. Not not a lot of them, but, you know, the ones I retained. But um, having her as a mother was uh, was a huge help in understanding about faith. But even with that, as I grew up, I began to put a lot of faith in people. And, um, you know, I, I figured, uh, you know, just like everybody else, you know, man, if I could just meet this person or if I could just sit down with that person or, man, if I could just get this person to hear my idea or, man, if just if this person could hear my track or, man, if I could just get this in the hands of somebody in the know. I was like everybody else. I thought that way. You know, I actually thought that if I could get in a certain situation with a certain person, that if a certain person were to meet me, that, you know, it could change everything for me. Oh, man. Oh, how wrong I was. Oh, how wrong I was. How long did I spend feeling that way? And how many of you out there possibly have felt that way before? You know, like even in a relationship, this is the person for me. And, you know, you just lay claim to that. You know, not necessarily being a fact, but you just lay claim to it. This is the person for me. This is the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with. You know, sometimes, you know, we just lay claim to stuff. And it's not always what's in our best interest or it's not always a fact. It's just what we decided we wanted. And I was guilty of that just like anybody else. And I spent a lot of years in my life putting faith in people. Man, if I could tell you anything this morning is to stop putting your faith in people and put your faith in God where it counts the most. I mean, you can get something out of this one. See, here's the deal about a relationship with God. It, it, it's the same all the time. He never changes. His word is 100% absolute. His word doesn't have loopholes in it. None of that. It's This is what it is. He's very clear. Now, you can deviate off your end of the bargain, but it don't stop what he says from being true. But if he asked you to do something, if, if God asks you to, 
to be a certain way, to do a little something a certain way, and you don't do it that way, then, you know, you could still possibly get by for a while, but don't you understand that his end of the deal stays the same? And as long as you're not doing it the way you're supposed to, the results are not going to be what you want it to be. And I did this for years and years and years, and I counted on people. And, uh, you know, I got myself in a lot of situations, and I got out one a dire situation that I'd been in for a number of years, but he had protected me from years prior to that. I didn't even know what was going on. And then he, he made it aware, made me aware of the problem. And then, man, Lord have mercy, I was in a dismal situation. And then at the end of the year, I was free, free from it all. But it was a decision that I had made that led up to that. And in And in going through that process, I had to learn something, man. I learned a lot about people. See, if you want to learn about your friends, if you want to learn about your people, people around you, get yourself in some trouble. Get yourself in a situation. Oh, man, you start looking around, man, the field get real clear when you're in trouble. The field clears out when you're in doubt, when you don't know what to do, when you need help. It get real clear on the playing field then, don't it? Oh, but when things is going right, it's time for a party. We throw in a celebration. We 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 gonna we gonna do one down here. Oh man, there's plenty of people on the field. But 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 get yourself in a situation. You find out rather quickly that oh no, oh no, everybody ain't here. And that's when I started learning. And I and I'm telling you, I had to start learning this for real until I finally got it to stop putting my faith in people and put all of mine in God where it counts the most. Now, is that to say that there are people that you can't trust? No, that's not what I'm saying. I ain't say you can't trust them, but you can't dump your faith in them. I got it all riding on what he say. I got it all riding on what she say. No, no, uh uh-uh, no. I hear you saying it, but I'm going to keep my eye on this situation. Because I hear you saying it. But I'm going to take this faith of mine, and instead of putting it in people, I'm going to put it in God where it counts the most. Because his word is absolute. What he say he's going to do, he's going to do. What he say he's not going to tolerate, he's not going to tolerate. Now, you can make it it tolerable for yourself, but he's not going to tolerate it. And that's just the end of the line. And so, you know, I'm, 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 I'm wondering how many people out there find themselves in a situation like me, or maybe you've gotten yourself in a situation because you put your faith in some people and now you wound up in a different type of situation. Now let me ask you, where them people at? The only one that I found when I was in my deepest trouble, when me and my wife were in our darkest situation, was God. It was the only one. It was the only one who was just right there. Right there all the way through. Now, let me explain something to you. Because you have this relationship with God, it does not mean, it does not mean now that it won't get, it won't still be a situation. You understand? But what he will do is protect you during that period. He'll cover you during that period that it is a situation. He will give you the strength to overcome the situation when it turns into a situation. Then when he, when he cracks it open for you and the sun is bright and shining, what he don't want you to do is when it gets sunny again to forget about him who was there when it was dark for you. See, I used to do that too. You know, I was, oh man, I did it. I'm, I'm telling you right now I did it. But I'm telling you, man, when I learned a very serious lesson and I watched some people I thought were friends of mine just sort of casually remove themselves from the situation. Then I said, okay. Me and Marjorie looked around. We said, okay, it's just me, you, and God. And we started conducting ourselves accordingly. So when it's sunny for us, we remember God. We stay prayerful. We keep talking to him. We thank him for the sunshine. We thank him for the dark days that he allowed us to do, who allowed us to survive it and turn it into sunny days. And we talk to him constantly to protect us of our future enemies. And that's what the deal is. So if I was everybody, I would stop putting your faith in people and put your trust in God where it really does count the most. It really, really does. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again. It's called morning. Uh, it's the time of the day that's great. In the words of my mother when I used to walk out the house to go to school every morning, today is the day that the Lord has made, boy. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Didn't quite understand that when I was growing up, but it started sinking in. I got it now, Mama. I am glad to be alive today. And however it goes, I know he's working on my behalf behind the scenes, and I expect nothing but great things to happen, even in the midst of turmoil and trial. I am holding fast to his unchanging hands. Good morning, Shirley. Amen. Good morning, Steve. Yeah, I'm locked and loaded. What's <laughs> up, Carla from Real? Amen again. What's going on, Steve? Happy well, Friday. Full compliment this morning. Uh, the youngest uh, of the uh, comedians on the show, uh, Kill Jr. of Spates. Morning, Unc. I appreciate that. The oldest one on the show, <laughs> the legend, the one who helped nurture me in my early days of comedy, taught me more things I knew about comedy today than anybody, ladies and gentlemen, J. Anthony Brown. Thank you so much, Steve Harvey. That counts as church where two or more are gathered. Hallelujah! Yeah. <laughs> and then the one that we're all trying to explain, but somehow <laughs> has managed to become the king of pranks, nephew Tommy. Yes, sir. Stupidity is in the building. Thank you so much. So what's going on with this election? You all were having a discussion before it got started. What's happening? I I was asking why Booker and Biden were uh, arguing or got a dispute. Yeah, well, what happened was uh, Joe Biden said something about segregation is back in the day, how uh, he used to work with them and they got things done. Uh, And he's refusing to apologize for that because Booker and I think Kamala Harris took issue with it, that he even brought the segregationists into the conversation, the fact that they used to do something. So he's refusing to apologize. As a matter of fact, Biden said... And he made it clear that he didn't like their politics. He he made it very clear that he didn't like their politics. He just worked with them to get stuff done. And that's it. And they want him to apologize. He says, I'm not apologizing. Yeah, and and he also said, I don't have a racist bone in my body. Joe Joe Biden said that. He said, Booker should apologize. Uh, He knows better, Biden said. I do not have a racist bone in my body. So this is crazy. It was at a Mm. fundraiser on Tuesday night when when, um, Biden... You know what? Yeah. Man. I was just talking about and Biden the says politics. Booker owes him an apology. Yeah, that's yeah. what I just said. I because yeah, yeah he, was, he said that. Yeah, he's saying you know they're saying trying to say that he's a racist. Biden's like that's not it. Anyway, you know what? Yeah. The Democrats hmm. are doing that's really pissing me off. That the Republicans are not doing. The Democratic Fighting. candidates are forming a circular firing mm-hmm. squad, mm-hmm. and they put somebody in the middle. And then they all open fire. They end up shooting each other. Yeah. Mm-mm. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. When you have a person that you could turn all this venom to who is outwardly doing Thank wrong. You. Thank you. The president. They brought Hope Hicks up to the Congress and got her to not answer questions. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, come on. Yeah. All right, Steve. We got to move on. Uh, coming up at 32 after the hour. Uh, We're going to do your favorite segment, Ask Steve. That's coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time for Ask Steve. This is Steve's favorite segment. We get to ask him questions, and he gets to answer. Uh, Our only request, this is another question, is that you keep your answers short. You don't more questions in. Because you waste time with that. (laughs) Why do you hate that so much? He hates (laughs) setup. He hates setup. He don't like that. He hates setup. He does. Yes, he does, Jay. (laughs) He does. He can't stand the setup, Uh -uh. man. (laughs) All right, Steve, here we go. What's the lamest lamest excuse uh, that you've given to get off the phone with someone? Oh. <laughs> I bet Come you on. got a lot of those. Come Phew, on. Lord have mercy. Oh. <laughs> the lamest though. One of my one of my best ones is that the swimming pool is on fire. What? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> now, swimming pool. There's uh, a, a somebody <laughs> spilled some oil and the sw- Women pool is on fire. A grease fire. That in the throws pool. people into yes, something. Yes, it does. For real, you gotta go. I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> uh. 
That's crazy, got, Steve. All right. Come here's on, Tommy. another one that I like, oh, too. Okay. So lame. What? <laughs> Oh hell! There's a rat in here. Oh god! Oh god! Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, That's that a works. good one too. Yeah, had to right. get y'all off the phone. N- tell me, come on. How, how about this? How do you handle? Uh, how do you handle people who won't stop talking? Despite, oh, I just, you oh, know, oh, oh, I got you know, that. despite plenty of nonverbal clues. Oh, I ain't got no problem. I just walk off. <laughs> What? Just I walk like off? Oh, I just walk <laughs> off, though. Yeah. Well, they, do they notice? Or they're so uh, busy talking, they don't even notice. Huh? I, I, I do it while I'm looking at them. <laughs> I give them one last blink. I like that And one. then I turn and walk off. <laughs> I yeah, like that one. I've done that a bunch of times. Parties, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I walks right off. <laughs> You're stupid. Yeah. Come, on, come on, Junior. What my kids was in my office one day just talking to me, asking me, I just got them walked out when I was back yard and lit a cigar. <laughs> Dad, really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> walk it off. Come on. All right. Uh, other than a plunger, what is something that you need to buy long before you need to use it? Insurance. <laughs> What is it? Yeah. Insurance. Uh-huh. insurance. Yeah. Oh, insurance. Yeah. Oh. That, that's an insightful answer right yeah. there. That's yeah. Really, that's uh-huh. one of the most mm-hmm. important things you can it do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Jay? Okay. You just saw a comedian, and you, this has happened to you. He or she was horrible. Yeah. Horrible. <laughs> yeah. When I say horrible, I mean horrible. Come on. If you don't want to crush their dreams. Yeah. What? <laughs> What do you say to him or her? What First of all, do not make direct eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he's not lying. They already no. know. No. <laughs> so, dog, first of all, do okay. not make direct okay. eye contact. Okay, wait a minute, Steve. Let me set it up. They come off stage and they're all excited. Hey, Mr. Steve, huh? What you think? What, what do you think? King of comedy. <laughs> yeah. How, how was that? What? What? Tell what, me let me ask you something. What did you think? <laughs> I thought it was great. I mean, did you see it? Did well, you yeah, see I it? saw it. I saw it. Let me explain something to you. Why do you think it was great? Well, I was out there. I made a connection with the people. Right there. Were, all, no, <laughs> listen to me. Two things. You was out there. That's all you were. The connection you made was not the one you looking for. We are here for last. You didn't get none. Where, where should I go from here? What should I do next? Back to your job. <laughs> your your day job. Your yeah. day job. Oh, I done told a lot of comedians, man. You got to pull yeah. up, partner. Yeah. You need to reconsider this, man. Say what you do. I think that happened to Chance the Rapper recently. Yeah, uh, he, he tried took to do to the a stage comedy night. Yeah, he tried to do a comedy night, and it, he bombed. No, yeah. the yeah. same what Chance do. Yeah, he's he a great the rapper. Yeah. Chance, yeah. The rapper. Yeah. Yeah. Chance, Chance the rapper, not yeah. Chance the comedian. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah all I right. heard that too, Shirley. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, okay, Steve, th- this is a personal thing. Just want to know how are you feeling? How are you doing? You had hernia hernia surgery about a week ago. What's the uh, update? I'm pretty good, man. I'm feeling better. Get stronger day by day. Still some irritation. You know, I got to watch how I move. Can't do it mm-hmm. real sudden. Uh, but I went back to work to Family Feud for the first time the other day. And for the first time in five weeks, I, I worked standing up pain free. Mm-hmm. So okay. Well, it's, it's healing. It's working out. Yes. I'm, I'm not mend. 100%, but mm-hmm. I'm fine and I will be fine. Yeah, you're on the mend. That's good. That's good. That's good. Hernia, That's good news. Sickle cell, <laughs> oh, leukemia. Oh, so we're doing a health days. report? No. Hernia, no. sickle cell, <laughs> leukemia, <laughs> stupidity. Pick one that you want to have. Say it again, say it again. In a small body. <laughs> Woo! But this is <laughs> like ending it, though. Woo! Like. Stupid. Yeah. Next question. All right, All right Carla, today, you got one? Yeah. Yes, Steve. All right, here we go. That was great. <laughs> that was greatness, right? Today is the first day of summer, Big Steve. Man. Yeah. What is one of your favorite summer memories? Just I'm take going us back. to the boat. <laughs> Every year <laughs> that's just favorite. Heading to the boat, man. <laughs> and what's so great about the boat, about Steve? That. Tell us. Because yeah. it is uh, the one place that I've found that I can vacation and really totally and completely recharge mm-hmm. my spirit, 
my mind and my body. Uh, it's so relaxing. Uh, and it's just me and my wife. And um, mm. it's my best friend. And we talk and we, and we work through a lot of things out there. We talk about our kids and grandkids. And we sit around and I date her. I date her the entire time. I take my wife to dinner every night. Nice. That's nice. Oh. That is nice. Yeah. I love summer. Mm-hmm. I don't nice. know what y'all going through. Right. What y'all going through summer. Well, Rich people. Probably. I mean, they work on Rich their people. marriage. That's what he's saying. But um, they, they got a great marriage. What is they going through? They yeah. like they just going through some poor ass. All right, All right. Listen, uh, if you want to ask Steve a question, go to Steve Harvey FM. Coming up next, it's the nephew with Run That Prank Back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment news, is Oprah thinking about bringing her talk show back? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Maybe, maybe. Also, a transgender woman of color, Janet Mock, has made history. Uh, but first, the nephew is here with Run That Frank Back. What you got, Neff? Uh, Shirley, we are going to run with <laughs> comb and brush. Uh, run it, cat dog. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach... Uh... Mr. Yeah, this Hey, listen, my name is uh, Sean. Uh, did you have an uncle that passed away named Yeah, uh-huh. All right. He your uncle, right? Yeah, that's my uncle. We we, we read him about three and a half months ago. Right. The well, well, reason why I was calling was I'm the person that actually cut your uncle hair when he passed away. Okay. So... Uh, reason why I was calling uh-huh. is uh, the situation is when I cut his hair, and, and I know you don't know the history about me, but my my daddy and my granddaddy was was barbers. We all barbers. Okay, get, so, I mean, come on, bro, get down to the bottom because you talking about my uncle, man, and I'm trying to see what's going on for real. Okay, and I'm sorry to call you like this, but what I'm telling you is that my my granddaddy and my daddy they they had passed down a brush and a comb to me. Okay, that is is like a sentimental value okay but for the for the last two three months i ain't been able to find the the, the comb and the brush that i used when i had cut his hair okay go ahead and what i was trying to call and tell you was that i can't find it what what i'm trying to okay, say what i'm okay what i mean okay so 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 what can i do to help you find comb and brush probably? that's what i'm saying when i did miss hair and, and edged it up at the funeral home that's the last time I remember having it. But this was three months ago, man. Right, right. It was about three months ago. What I'm trying to say is I left a comb and brush and, you know, went to the funeral home and did his hair. Okay. And I talked to the funeral home, and they told me that, you know, if I'm trying to find a comb and brush, I got to get permission. Man, what color you. is the comb and brush? What's the color of the comb and brush? It's black. They both of them black. The comb is black and oh. the brush. He got all kind of combs that black and go on, man. No, no, no. See what I'm saying is the comb and brush is black, and I know I lost it, but I'm almost certain on about where it is. Okay, so if you certain about where it is, why you calling? That, that's the reason why I'm calling you, cause I'm almost certain I left it with him. You left it with my dad. Or... So I called the funeral home. They told me I need to call you in order to get permission to get it. Okay, you call the funeral home to get permission from me. That you can go get the comb and brush from where the funeral? So sure, you can go down there. If they got it. No, no, no. See, the, the the comb and brush ain't with the funeral home. The comb and brush is in there with your uncle. The what? The the comb and brush hold is up, in the casket. Hold up, hold up, man. With the, you, you, hold up. I, I mean, I don't say you got to say that again. What? You well, what now? I'm trying to say to you is that the comb and brush. Is in, I'm trying to say and just say what you're saying. I'm saying, saying it, man. man the, the comb and brush is in the casket with your uncle. If it's in there, it's six feet. Well, well, see, see what I'm trying to say is that the comb and brush is sentimental value to me. Bro, it couldn't have been too valuable if you lost it. Well, no, what it was, I value, you know, my work. So I just really got caught up in well, my work, got really. Too much- if you talking about you done left it with my uncle that's dead three months ago, man. What kind of shit are you talking about, homeboy? All I'm trying to do with you is see if, if you don't mind approving for them to bring the body up so I can get the comb and brush. <laughs> you done lost your mind. 
But see, but, a lot of for a but, but see, but what I'm trying to explain to you, this sentimental value. I'm trying to get y'all to bring the body up so I can get my comb and brush out of it. Because like I say, my daddy and my granddaddy was born. Dude, this whole thing is sentimental, man. You talking about my dead uncle, man. And you talking about bringing him up out of the ground for a comb, man. I just got these to stop crying around here. And I understand what y'all going through as as a family and stuff. Hey, right? man, and how you trying to go about doing this all thrown off, homeboy? Because ain't nobody digging up no body to bring back no, no brush, man. But you got me pissed off now, man. Because you're calling me talking stupid, man. You talking about putting my, my uncle, man. That's, man, that's not hey, man, it, man. Man, I ain't trying to start no... You talking about comb and brush, man. All these Walmart's right Okay, but well, I understand all that, but this is sentimental value, man. Well, this is sentimental to me, man. This is something that my, my people love me. sentimental to me, okay? That was my favorite uncle, man. Okay, you talking about pulling up this body, man. I got Paul oh, boy. Hey, man, man, I'm not, I don't want no... If no, you've been cutting my career that long, man, you should know how he operate, man. And hey, we don't get out like this here, man. I, man, I ain't finna sit here and argue with you. Look, I got some people... Man, I, you, man. I got some people that here... I mean, where you stay at, man? Okay, let me say this, man. I got some people that's here with me right now. You know, some of my friends, and we got some shovels. So I can actually go over there and, and go on and get the cone and the brush now. And in the morning, ain't nobody gonna even man, know. you ain't gonna go get now, but... Whoop it all, boy. Say what? You don't get shit but a whoop. You don't dig up a whoop. For going and get a comb and a I got some shovels, too. You talking about going to the cemetery and trying to dig up my whoop? What's wrong with you, man? Hey, man, I'm trying to get my comb and brush back. I ain't trying to have no problems with you. But I want my comb and brush. Who the hell do you think you talking to, man? Go to Walgreens. Go to Walgreens. Go to Walmart. Go to Safeco. They got them. Hey man, ain't nobody. This ain't even about your uncle. This more than that. This and you ain't even got no room to be hollering at me all day. Ain't nobody hollering at you, man. All I'm telling you is, I got a comb and brush in your uncle casket, and I want my brush. Well, right. you dig one, did you? Might want dig two. Say what? I'm gonna bust, and you gonna fall right over in there. Around here. Yeah? So what you think? You trying to you trying to dig a grave for me? Man, do you know how long this been? I've been trying to get these. I stop crying this man. Shut up, man. I dare you to with his body. I dare you to with his man. Stop up, boy. I understand what you're going through. I do. Man, who the f is this, man? I told you, I know why I'm crying his head. And I want my You sound like a f about digging on somebody's body, man. Overcoming a bush. I, I got it. I was just trying to call you like a man. Because I want to get the comb and brush, and I didn't want to go without getting your permission. Now, if I got to go without getting your permission, I will. Come on with me, You don't know me. Come cry with me, Yeah, just cry with me, It's sentimental to me. Just cry with me, Man, your brush, dad, your comb. I want to say something else to you. You ain't doing shit. I want to hear. Are you listening? What? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy, s man. Man, you a man. <laughs> Hello? Uh... Hey. <laughs> you just got pranked by your boy, s man. I hope that got a brush of the cones in it. Ooh, no, I think I needed that cry. <laughs> hey, man, I got to ask you, man. What is the baddest radio show in the land? You know like I know. Steve Harvey Morning. <laughs> Did show I get you, man? All right, coming up at the top of the hour, thank you, nephew. Entertainment news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, well, if you missed the Oprah Winfrey show, you might be happy to hear that uh, she's considering a reboot. Uh, while Whoa. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's big news, right? While promoting The Path Made Clear, Oprah teased the idea of returning. She said, I would love to make that happen, let me tell you, but maybe not every day. Oprah went on to say, for 25 years, it was perfect, she said. The only time I missed it uh, was during the election or when... Something really big happens in the news. I think, oh, gee, I wish I had a show. Um, but, you know, I mean, the fact that she's considering it yeah. is Maybe almost, once a week. Is almost good break. enough. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she, oh. she was absolutely the best that yeah, has ever, brilliant. ever done a brilliant. talk show. Yeah. The absolute person, best, man. Yeah. Yeah. And if yeah. she want to go back, she can go. 
Yeah. Oh, this is waiting on her. Yeah. Once a week, yeah. twice yeah. a week, once we'll, a we'll month. Be yeah, we'll, we'll be take there. it, Oprah. We'll Thank you. Once a month, whatever yeah, she does. Yeah, whatever, man. yeah. We'll take it, yeah. yeah Junior, what you mean network. we'll be there? No, I'm just saying, we watch it in front of oh, the TV. Oh, I was going to say, because she's not finna hide you and Jay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> she lied. Like you did. I mean, no, I don't know. Did. Don't crush yeah. my dream. Don't be like no, that. No, I don't crush huh? that dream. <laughs> <laughs> you shut that down. Matter of fact, that's not a dream. That's not a possibility. Yeah. You can take that off your I, vision boat. I was on the Oprah show. She might. Uh, no, she no, might. no, 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 no. Oprah ain't coming out there doing that little she monologue like me. No, she's not. Don't Oprah don't do monologue. Your dream is crushed. <laughs> he just crushed it. I mean, Jay, he just crushed it. Crushed it. Crushed Oprah ain't finna have you two fools sitting up in no time right now. Come on, hell, Oprah. Well, funny, funny, funny. Yeah, uh, and also in uh, entertainment news, Janice Mock, uh, Janet Mock, I should say, uh, is making history. She just signed a three-year, multi-million dollar deal with Netflix. Uh, that makes her the first transgender wo- transgender woman of color with the power to call her own shots at a major content company. Uh, her wow. deal allows her to serve as an executive producer and director of Ryan Murphy's forthcoming Netflix series, Hollywood. Janet released a statement saying, as someone who grew up in front of the TV screen, whether that was watching talk shows or family sitcoms or VHS films, I never thought that I would be embraced. Uh, she noted. And then she said, uh, and more than embraced, uh, given not just a seat at the table, but a table of my own making. So to you, Janet Mock, we say congratulations. Right. And we'll be looking for your show on Netflix because they definitely need content. I love that. Yeah. She might need writers out, yeah. whatever. We might have to be over <laughs> there. Uh, 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 Janet, you hiring? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Janet, call us. Me and Junior. We'll be there. Baby. She's the boss. <laughs> the opening monologue crew, right? Here. <laughs> <laughs> right, Tommy. Well, whatever yeah. she needs. <laughs> She's the boss and the director, so hey, know, yeah. shoot your shot. Hey, we're not That's just cool. regular writers. We're Emmy nominated. Mm-hmm. Just Thank want to put you. that out there. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's, right. That's for life, though. That's, yeah. That's all I got. That's on your resume. Yeah. Pop your collar. Yeah. Like that. That's big. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. There are yeah. people that work in TV and movies and everything all their lives, all their careers, and never get there's any it, awards. There's so. Emmy winners and Emmy nominated in this room right here. That's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. In this, yeah. In this room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what, what are you yearing about? <laughs> he got the Emmys. Right. <laughs> but it, it's like shake and bake. We help. So how about that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 nothing to say about that, Steve? No, I ain't got nothing to say about that. Yeah, they did help, though. Yeah. Right? It sounds like, Them was yeah. my dudes I enjoyed Man, working we, with. Boy, it was fun working up there every day with Steve. Boy. Yeah. You know. Uncle Steve talked to us crazy every single <laughs> He didn't miss a day. <laughs> Like he don't do it. You know, that charges him. Yeah. You know what I liked the best and didn't like? It was the walk of shame. The walk. The, the walk, walk of shame? Of shame. Oh, they had a what walk of that? shame? Yeah. Oh, that? my God. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh well, uh, we're, it's time for headlines, Steve. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. And good morning, everybody out there on this Friday. This is Andrew Pitts News. The Trump administration is claiming that the Iranians shot down an unmanned U.S. Navy drone yesterday over the Straits of Hormuz. The Pentagon says the surveillance drone was gathering information over international waters. President Trump calls this downing a big, big mistake. However, the Persians say they were picking up pieces of the thing only 10 miles off their coast and that it was not as far away as the White House claims. And now we hear from the New York Times that President Trump approved military strikes against Against Iran last night in retaliation for the shooting down of that surveillance drone, but he reportedly changed his mind at the last minute. Trump, they say, initially okayed attacks on a number of Iranian targets, including radar and missile batteries, and then decided against it. Meanwhile, the FAA has issued an emergency order banning American operators from flying over parts of Iran, Iranian-controlled airspace. That's just in from the New York Times. The FBI reportedly looking into what may be going on in the Dominican Republic, where several American tourists have died under mysterious circumstances since January. Right now, the Fed's analyzing alcohol samples from the hotel minibar at the Bahia Principe Resort to see if there's anything out of the ordinary. The Post reporting that the Ministry of Health down there has collected blood samples from those who died. Meanwhile, there's been no mention any mention about an investigation into how an African-American couple from New York, upstate New York, last seen headed for the airport, ended up dead. The man floating face down in the water and the woman unconscious on the side of the road, and she later died. Nobody's mentioning that case. 
Well, he's back. Alabama Republican Roy Moore says he's making a second run for the U.S. Senate. Last time around, you may remember the twice ousted Alabama chief justice who is married was accused of improper sexual misconduct for allegedly running after high school girls for sex. He was defeated by a Democrat, Doug Jones. Republican Party officials discouraging his candidacy. So is President Trump, but Moore still very sure of himself. I'm not going against President Trump at all. I support President Trump. I'll vote for President Trump. Whether he votes for me or not, we'll see. Can I win? Yes, I can win. Not only can I, they know I can. He's talking about the local GOP bigwigs, I guess we'll see. 72 Philadelphia police officers placed on administrative duty because of the social media posts they've made. Authorities say many of the cops commented, uh, say that they call for violence against Muslims and protesters and black people and immigrants, those accused of crimes. They say some posts even celebrated police brutality and violence against women. 72 Philadelphia cops. And finally, everybody, it's summer. It's summertime, summertime, some, some, summertime, summertime. That's right, summertime, summer today. Summertime, now back summertime, to the Steve summertime, Harvey summertime, Morning summertime, Show. Summertime. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, in the wake of LeVar Ball's inappropriate comment directed at ESPN's Molly Kiram, uh, Rose, Molly Kiram Rose, he's been temporarily banned from all ESPN platforms. What did what did he say? Oh. Right, take, take a listen. Take a listen. Go ahead. Go LeVar, ahead before I, I get back que- to him. LeVar, can I switch gears with you? for? Because I have a question you here. You can switch gears with me anytime. <laughs> Let's stay oh, focused Lord. here. All right. Um, you asked for it, Steve. That's what he said. You heard Stephen A. Smith saying, oh, Oh, Lord. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So ESPN released a statement. Uh, There will be no LeVar Ball on any ESPN platforms heading forward. Um, So that's it. He can put his foot in his mouth one time, two minutes. Yeah. One ball has messed it up for three balls. I'm here to tell you that Mm. right now. Yeah. Like ignorant daddy. Get your ball, man. Yeah. Get your ball. Get your daddy, man. And and people, you know, they condemned him for that remark. They were upset. He said afterward that he wasn't trying to say anything inappropriate to Molly uh, Rose. Uh, She said she thinks her husband, Jalen, though, would uh, like LeVar to apologize publicly to her. Hmm. Yeah. You think that's going to happen, Steve? Well, Jalen is my boy. Are we good? And uh, I would make the apology myself personally. I would make it just to make sure there was no misunderstanding. Because, look, even if he didn't mean it that way, and I could understand how he could say that, you know, because he's just talking fast. You can switch gears with me anytime. I mean, you know, now if he looked at her up and down, you know how you get that up and down look? Then I got I got what that could have meant. But the fact that it was misunderstood that way, he should say, hey, look, I mean, I think he's saying I'm not apologizing, but I'd apologize publicly just to stay straight with another man and his wife. Because I don't want nobody doing it to mine and feeling some kind of way. I would apologize just to even it, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and they said he's said some things inappropriate in the past to other I, women. I, right. Oh, to women? Oh, uh-huh. Okay. So that's why ESPN took the stand that they did. And and Molly said she felt it was inappropriate mm-hmm. as well. It's so how, then he's, how she perceived he, it. He should probably. It and that's right. what it is. Right. That's well, then that's it. That yeah. See, if yeah. That's, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. 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 If she perceived it any kind of way, Absolutely. then we have a problem, partner. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In this climate today or outside of this climate, even before the Me Too movement, uh, man, my wife made me understand something real clear. Like, you know, we'll be discussing something and she'll get her feelings hurt. I said, baby, I ain't mean that. She said, Steve, Doesn't the fact hate. that you didn't mean nothing, didn't mean it, the way I took it hurt my feelings. Right. Yeah, now, does, guess yeah, what I yeah. got to do? I got to you fix this for my girl. Apologize. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. fact that I don't even see what she talking about, mm-hmm. that ain't got nothing to do with it, partner. Absolutely. The fact that I watched her shut down is the part I got to now deal with. And as yeah. a husband, I got to fix that. That's right. All right, coming up at 34 after the hour, here's a question. Should the U.S. pay reparations for slavery right after this you're listening to the steve harvey morning show uh there was a fiery debate um and it has erupted uh at the first congressional hearing in a decade to explore whether the descendants of u.s slaves should be compensated actor danny glover told the panel that reparations would cure the damages inflicted by enslavement and forced racial exclusionary policies. Economist uh, Julianne Malveaux 
uh, wants Congress to address structural inequalities affecting black Americans, she said, when zip codes uh, det- when zip codes determine uh, what kind of schools you go to and what kind of food you eat, these are the vestiges of enslavement that mm-hmm. a lot of people don't want to deal with. I mean, they're voicing their opinions. This is what they're saying about uh, why, the reasons we should get reparations. There's an author, Tanahisi Coates. He argued that compensation was due not just for the historic injustice of slavery, but for the discrimination and, and depredation uh, official and unwritten the community has been subjected to in the time after emancipation. So the question Ooh, is, I love that. yeah, Ooh, that, that's that beautiful. Profound. Yeah, it was. Yes. So yes. should the U.S. pay reparations for slavery? Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Not according to Mitch McConnell, but. Oh, yeah. uh, Somebody damn what he said. Yeah. Yeah. He voted for an African-American president. Yeah. 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 So. It's. Um, it's uh, see, here's the thing. In order for this to even possibly, possibly and remotely catch wheels, people of color and people of non-color who are on board with this have to organize and get a unified, voted upon constituency of people who deal with just the facts and who are put in the front to argue the point. See, what happened with Black Lives Matter is you had too many people speaking, and then right in the middle of the Black Lives Matter movement, one person brought up reparations. Now, look, if we're going to do this, we're going to have to get a solidified group of people who are going to make a movement to put this before Congress, to put this before the Senate, to making an actual bill where it has some grounds and validity with the designated points and a plan to carry it out. That's the only way this works. You cannot have one million people screaming different reasons for reparations. We've got to come together and decide who will be the unit to represent this cause, who are the lawyers that are going to formulate this for us, Who's going to take it before the Congress and the Senate? Which congressmen or senators can we get backing from to present this in the way? Because you are talking about a huge sum of money. Mm -hmm. You're talking about something that has to have validity to prove, like that gentleman who said the constitutional part of it. Then you got to have the people that can prove uh, the barren landscape that the hoods were created. You've got to prove that the Willie Lynch letter is really still in effect. You've got to prove the economic disaster. Even though it's out there, everybody knows that we are, because of our zip code, we are educated differently. Everybody knows it, but the people who are in power don't give a damn. Mm. Matter of fact, they've helped create the policy to keep these things in place because they know if they can control your income, they can control your actions. You're right, Steve. That's one thing, uh, too, about um, Elizabeth Warren. Isn't she the one that's talking mostly about reparations in her campaign Mm. platform Mm -hmm. for 2020? But see, I'm careful about people who are just doing it for a platform because they'll say anything Anything to get get elected. All they're trying to do is get black votes. Mm-hmm. right now. This ain't new. Mm-hmm. So don't mm-hmm. come because it's an election year and start talking about reparations for black people and you ain't never gave a damn about them until you started running. But I, I definitely mm-hmm. like what you're saying about it should be an organized effort it uh, has to, to get it done. done. It has to be. Only way. It can't yeah. be us screaming for it. Right. right. All right, Steve Harvey Nation, we want to hear from you about reparations. Go to Steve Harvey FM and comment. Now, up next, we're going to switch gears here because uh, the nephew's in the building with today's prank phone call coming up ah, right, ah, <laughs> right ah, after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after the hour, uh, it's my strawberry letter for today's subject. Maybe I should hang out with my ex, too. But right oh, now, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? 
You know what, Shirley? I think I've come up with an incredible. I'm, I'm, I'm actually just brilliant. You're That's genius. What I am. Uh-huh. I'm a genius. <laughs> Don't hey, be so shy. Hey, hey, listen to me. Listen to me. No, you're not. <laughs> No, you not. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. No, no. It ain't credibility and genius. is two different things. You're not a genius. The man is a genius. You're I'm not genius. Because all you got to do is Tom. listen to who telling you. The man I'm, is a genius. Damn it. So a genius, a genius. genius can't tell you he a genius? I'm no. A genius. No. Team Anybody that got to tell you who they are and what they do, it probably, probably ain't. ain't true. Probably ain't. Yeah. Okay, Man's okay, okay. So when you hear this, I want you to just let me know what you think afterwards. This Before right here, I've come genius. up with this. This is a four three relationship. Four days with your wife, and then the other three days your wife yeah. is with me. Four <laughs> three. Here it is. Four three relationship. Come on, cat. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach Maurice. Yeah, this him. Hey Maurice, my name my name is Devin, man. How you doing this evening, brother? Oh man, I'm kinda sleepy, man. I work at nights, bro. What's going on? Who, 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 who is this again? This is Devin, man. I talked to your wife, Keisha, the other day. That's that's your wife, right? Yeah, that's my wife. Yeah, I, I talked to your wife. Is she in right now? No, she's not in. She at work, bro. Okay, okay. I, I apologize, man. I didn't mean to wake you up. You work at night or something? Yeah, I'm a crane operator at night, bro. No people don't call me until three o'clock. And you know what's this? What is it? What is, a, what is a bill collect or something? No, 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 no. No, I talked to your wife, man. She's interested in um. This thing we got, man, called a 4-3 relationship. She told me she wanted me to call back and talk to her husband about it. And uh, she gave me the number to hit you up at the house, man, and l- let you know all about the 4-3 relationship because she's real interested in it. A 4-3 relationship. You say you talked to my wife about it? Yeah, I talked to Keisha a couple of days ago. She gave me the number. She said, call him back. He'll be at home at this time. You can hit him up and see if he likes it. She said, but she definitely likes it, man, and she wanted to see if you would be interested in a 4-3 relationship, too. You know, we want to get your approval on it before we went any further, but uh, your wife was very excited about it, man. She was uh, wanting to get started as soon as possible, and I wanted to see about contacting you and making sure that you agreed and approved on everything. But she definitely wanted to get your blessing, get your approval on it. Yeah, uh, I'll try to do anything to make her happy, dog, but I got to get some more some information about this. So what is that again? A, a three, four, four, three? No, no, it's a four, three. A four, three relationship is what it is. Okay, well, if it make her happy, you know, I'm willing to listen. Okay, well, listen, man, we're probably going to get started right away. Uh, probably Monday. We'll get started on Monday. Uh, you'll go through Monday through Thursday, and then uh, and then I'll pick up, you know, Friday through Sunday, man, and we'll go ahead and get this thing started. I think after a month, you'll pretty much catch on to everything, you know? This something going to be shipped to the house? Uh, uh, pick. You say pick up. What you mean pick up? She she, she hasn't mentioned any of this to you. No, nah, man. She ain't mentioned nothing this to me. Okay. All right. Well, what this is, man, a four three relationship, uh, Maurice, is this. You know, you spend four days with Keisha, and she comes over to my place, and she spends the other three days with me. That's what a four three relationship. So see, this kind of frees you up, man, on anything you might want to do on those other three days, man, where she might be tying you down. You know, so four of them days, you know, you with her, but the other three days, you kind of have some free time to yourself. But she'll be over at my place on the other three days. That's what a, that's what basically a four three relationship is. Pardon me. Say say what now? I say pardon me. You say she'll spend four days with me, three days with you. That's that's it, sir. That's the four three relationship right there, Maurice. You know, you you really gonna like this, man. Like I say, she was excited about it. Hold on. Are you serious? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm dead serious, man. Like I said, Keisha was excited hold about on, it. Hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, man. I know wife ain't discuss you about relationship, spending four days with me, three days with me, man. So you talking about my wife, homeboy? Oh, no, I, I'm, yeah, no, I know no, it's your no, wife, no, man. you hold up. What's your name again? My name Devin. Devin. Say, bro, I don't play games, man. I don't know how got my number. What's, what's, I mean, Maurice, what's wrong? I mean, a lot of what couples you, are doing... What mean, what's wrong? That's my wife. Bro, who you think you're talking to? You ain't talking to no pro... Who you think you're talking to? Okay, well, listen, man. A, a lot of couples are doing the 4-3, man. I like, would give a... What other couples is doing at home, but my wife and me ain't interested in no 4-3 relationship. I can't, be, I can't believe you want my up for this, man. Are you serious? You calling me talking about... Four three relationship. And you know, I told you I work at night. Why do I 
didn't, I didn't know you worked that night, man. Like I said, see, when I came over last week, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You came over well last week. I know you ain't finna say what I thank you for the f- day. You better not say it. You better not say it. Go ahead. Go ahead, finish. Go ahead. Go ahead, player. You been talking? Don't stop now. Go ahead. Dog, uh, Maurice, hold up, dog. This, this gets no, too. No, no, hold up. You don't. I'm up, player. I'm up. Now don't say it. Go ahead. I dare you. No, all, all I'm saying is, I came by there last you came, week, man. You came by where? I came by your house. You come by my house. Okay. Are you at eighteen four trail? Get by been here for the last ten years. Oh, so you mean you bought your house? Okay, dog. No, because because no, she no, said. No, okay, she said she was. I didn't, call, I didn't call Keisha right now. Cause this first man. First of all, you don't want stuff. Then you gonna tell me you've been in my house? Okay, player. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, dog. No, if y'all not interested in the four three man, then I won't. I won't be wasting no, no more you of your time. You waste time. You really are. You waste time calling me with my little wife. Don't tell you about. She want a four three. She never told me nothing about player. You got the wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with my relationship. Okay, okay. so why would she tell me she interested in the 4-3, man? I wouldn't give a what she told you. I know I take care of my bedroom, all right? Four three. I wish she would leave three days. I wish she would. Anyway, I know you. How do you know us? I don't know you from man and I don't mind taking off work tonight to sell see what the going on in my house with my train at night working all Night. Now, I'm going to ask you again, how do you know us? Man, I, I know y'all through Tommy, man. Who is Tommy? Tommy who? Tommy, man. Maurice, nephew Tommy. <laughs> this, this, this is nephew Tommy, man, from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, dog. Your wife, Keisha, got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> man, you, you talking about the Steve Harvey Show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And if you talking to the little bald head <laughs> that's up there next to Steve, man, I know y'all ain't <laughs> with me, man. I know y'all not <laughs> with me today. Man, if Steve said next to you, tell no, him. No, no. Why you? Why Steve need to be over here? So he can slap <laughs> bald at your bald <laughs> head, you little bald head. <laughs> but you ain't got nothing to do but people, man. I slow down. They should know I got to go to work to the city. She she told that. me you got to go to work. You work at night, man. All right, all right, Maurice, I'm going to let you go back to sleep, man. But one more thing, dog. Tell me this, man. What is the... <laughs> what's yeah, the baddest? Man. And I mean the baddest. Hey, this real cute to you, ain't you, you got jokes, huh? I wish I was there. I wish I was there. You <laughs> you. <laughs> hey, man, what's the baddest radio show in the land, man? <laughs> the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> now that I have so geniusly done this thing, Somebody tell you. me. I don't Come know on if you now. Listen to the husband. Did you hear him? You so damn now. stupid to even <laughs> think that you were genius. Angry because he and had that, accepted and that it yet. black. <laughs> what? <laughs> you here, Jay? Come on, Steve. You here, Jay? He was angry because he hadn't fully accepted it. Once he accepted yeah, all yeah. of us. Yeah. Come on, baby. Yeah. Team yeah. Tommy, Team Leukemia up in here, baby. Yeah. Team Tommy, Team, Lou. team Leukemia. Uh-huh. That's that, do? hey, 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 partner. That's that chemo talking. <laughs> Steve, you almost <laughs> lost it. <laughs> 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 the chemo talking. <laughs> we're, we're on the radio, baby. We're on the radio. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. We just over here hammering each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, thank you, nephew, we think. Uh, up next, it is today's <laughs> Strawberry Letter subject. Maybe I should hang out with my ex, too. Mm-hmm. Mm. We'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit hey, strawberry uh, letter. Shirley, yes, I just dear. want to clear something up. What is that? Steve? You know, for people that think I'm hard on J. Anthony Brown. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Jay, you want to tell them the phone call, or do I have to tell them the phone uh, call I, mean, I got I was, before yeah, I went into surgery? What phone call? I tried to find a card oh, who called you? to say all this, but I couldn't find Go ahead and tell them. I just... Tell he going to call me before I go into surgery. I'm thinking something wrong with my dude. He called yeah. me and said, man... You are, you on your way to surgery? I said, yeah, go in this morning, man. Sure hope your punk ass don't die. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Lou do it. 
Loot, that's how loot roll. Loot. Wait a minute, that's one more time, Steve. Dog, hey man, you about to go into surgery? Yeah, man. I'm thinking, you know, you know, Jay got leukemia. Yeah. You know, something wrong. So I called my dude right back. He he said, you about to go into surgery? I said, yeah. He said, sure hope your punk ass don't die. <laughs> Now that's said, love right there. We've known each other so long, and that's how we talk to one another. Yeah, I mean, man. I said, well, I'm, I'm gonna try not to, man. I ain't <laughs> man, hanging there praying for you. Did, <laughs> what? Then, then that's that's after. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, no, here's here's the sad part. When he called me when he got out of surgery, I went, mean, I'll be damned. Yeah. I said, Jay, he I'm made good, it. man. He made I, it. I said, Jay, I'm good. I'll be damned. <laughs> No, he didn't. No, he yeah. didn't, Steve. Yeah, that's how we've been doing each other. So people in here, there's all this calling in, talking about, why you so hard on him, talking about that's that chemo talking and all that. Nobody won't hear all that. <laughs> but you guys make each other laugh, and you know, yeah, yeah oh that's God, what it's man. about. Yeah, They wow. like brothers, yeah. man. You guys I told my wife, I said, I said, baby, 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 listen, you can't get mad at Jay about this. Why would he? I said, baby, because that's how we do each other. I said, don't worry about it. You know, you try yeah. to be gone long for me. Don't worry about it. Yeah. She said, Steve, why would you say that? Your friend is sick. You should be praying for him. I am, but I ain't got nothing to do with it. You guys go hard, but yeah. that's that's you the know, love that's between. Way that's, way it's way love. Right, it's tough go. love. Yeah. yeah it's good. All right, we could be reading your letter uh, live on the air, just like we're going to read this one today, right now. Let's go, nephew. Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. It is the strawberry letter. Okay. Um, subject, maybe I should hang out with my ex, too. Uh, dear Stephen Shirley, I married my wife and I have a five-year-old daughter. I'm married and my wife and I have a five-year-old daughter. My wife's relationship with her ex-boyfriend is not normal, and I seem to be the only one that has a problem with it. Over the weekend, my wife took our child to a birthday party at her ex-boyfriend's home. Her ex-boyfriend and his wife invited my wife and my daughter, and they went. This bothered me because I have spoken with my wife a few times about her close relationship with her ex. She doesn't see it as a problem because the guy is married and has his own family. It doesn't help that the ex is the cousin of her best friend, so they are always hanging out together. I'm not insecure and I don't believe she's attracted to him, but I never trust the man in this situation. I don't know why she has to talk to him at all. I could see if they shared a child together or they had business ties, but they don't. I find it to be very disrespectful. And ladies, you know if the shoe was on the other foot, you would lose your mind. We've been married for five years, and this is the only problem we've had so far. Whenever I bring it up, it creates a lot of tension, and she tells me that I'm overreacting, and I need to learn to deal with it. She would not be able to deal with it if I went to happy hour with my ex a few times a month, uh, with my ex a few times a month. So how should I handle this? I want to speak with the man, but I really don't want to look insecure or soft. Am I putting too much weight on this? I say absolutely not because how you feel about a situation is how you feel about a situation, and they're valid, uh, and and this is a problem because you're right. If the shoe was on the other foot, meaning, ladies, if he kept uh, a close relationship with his ex, this would be a disaster. It would. You're absolutely right about that. I think your wife uh, should consider your feelings. Uh, in this situation, I think, you know, when you're this close, it can bring problems. Uh, you could, you know, you never know what can happen when you're this close in a relationship. And if it bothers you, why isn't your marriage more important than her relationship with this ex? I don't get it. I think you're right. Uh, you know, if you start, and, and you know how men are, you said it, you don't trust the man in this relationship, so you do trust your wife. So, you know, I don't suggest necessarily that you go out with your ex because that can create a whole another set of problems in your marriage. I just think you should just try and deal with your wife. Really let her know what it looks like, how you feel, what is what's going to happen, how what could happen and then deal with it that way. And maybe she'll come around. Steve. No, this is easy for me right here, partner. First of all, <laughs> let's just get this out the way. Your wife's relationship with her (laughs) ex-boyfriend is not normal. You said that. And you seem to be the only problem with it. Now, over the weekend, your wife took your child to a birthday party at her ex-boyfriend's home. 
Now, her ex-boyfriend and his current wife invited my wife and my daughter, and they went. They ain't invite you. They ain't invite you. They invited her and the baby, and and then she went. This bothered me because I've spoken with my wife a few times about her closeness with her ex. She don't see it as a problem because this guy married and got his own family. What is she still dealing with him for? Hmm. This your ex-boyfriend. Y'all ain't got no child together. It ain't like it was they child. This your child. Why is she all up in this dude's face on any damn level? And they always hanging out together. What? All right, Steve, hold that. Hold that. All that you have right there, hold all of that. Uh, We're going to get into part two. Yeah, all that vigor. (laughs) Uh, Get into uh, part two of your response coming up at 23 after the hour. Subject of today's strawberry letter, maybe I should hang out with my ex, too. Hmm. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. Subject, maybe I should hang out with my ex, too. I I don't understand this letter. I really, really don't. From the husband. Because, yeah, this don't even have to be a problem. This man has a wife and a baby with this five-year-old daughter with this woman. She a relationship with her ex-boyfriend is a problem. They're married. Mm -hmm. Now, her and her ex-boyfriend still have a relationship, and over the weekend, his wife took their child to a birthday party at the ex-boyfriend's house. Her ex-boyfriend is now married, and they invited my wife and my daughter, and they went. They didn't invite you, partner. See, I'm worrying about this part right here. Why I ain't get the invitation? You with everybody married? Mm-hmm. Well, this bothered me because he's spoken to his wife a few times about her closeness to her ex. She don't see it as a problem because the guy's married and got his own family. Well, what you over there for, though? <laughs> Why you still got to have a relationship with him? I know y'all slept together. It don't ever leave a dude's mind. She doesn't see it as a problem because he married. So they're always hanging out together, too. Now, I'm not insecure, and I don't believe she's attracted to him. Man, stop. <laughs> Man, stop. <laughs> you are insecure. That's what this whole damn letter is about. You are insecure. Mm. Ain't nothing wrong with that, partner. But you can put a stop to this here, though. And I don't believe she's attracted to him. She was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She was. And he was attracted to her. Now, if he was attracted to her, I can tell you right now, he still is. Because he a man, and you refer to that in the letter. You say, and I don't believe she's attracted to him, but I never trust a man in this situation. Because you know good and hell well. Once we was attracted to you, where that go? What you do with that because you got married? Man told me when you get married, the only difference... Of the next day after you get married, it's the appearance of your left hand, third thing. Everything you liked before you got married, mm. you're going to like the same damn thing the day after you married. So now he liked her once, he liked her now. You can't tell me she don't walk in there and this dude ain't sitting there, man, I slept with both of these. No, you can't tell me that. That's a crazy situation. Mm. So. And she said, I don't know why she talked to him at all. Because you let her. <laughs> I could see if they shared a child together or they had business ties, but they don't. I find it very disrespectful. And here's the kicker. And ladies, you know if the shoe was on the other foot that you would lose your rabbit mind. You already know that. Mm -hmm. Married for five years, and this is the only problem we've had. Now, whenever I bring it up, it creates a lot of tension, and she tells me I'm overreacting, and I need to learn how to deal with it. I'm going to learn how to deal with a damn thing. What? I promise you, sister, I'm not finna learn how to deal with a damn thing. Who you talking to? I got to, I got, I'm overreacting and, and it's creating tension in our marriage because you keep bringing your ex into our home. Oh, man, partner, let me explain something to you. <laughs> if you went to your happy hour with your ex wife a few times a month, she'd have a heart attack. Yes be a disaster. <laughs> so how should I handle this? I want to speak to the man. First of all, don't say nothing to that man. Your man didn't take the vows, your wife did, to leave all others and cleave only unto you. But she want to hang on. Look, you know what I tell my wife, dog, she was playing something like this with me. Take your ass down there one more time. Mm -hmm. And when you come home, see if he'll make all the payments up in here. Ooh. You know, since y'all down there, well, happy be right there together, at the house. You know, you, you. you know what? <laughs> let, let, let's 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 see if he gonna pay for all these damn vacations. 
Call them clothes down there and them receipts and stuff. See if he willing to chip in on this right here. Take all these bills down there. See which one of these he going to pay. Because he going to have to pay all of them because I'm through. You're not going to disrespect me with your ex and expect me to sit here and take it because you want me to be all right with it. Well, the hell I ain't. Mm. Sitting up in here talking to me like I'm crazy. I got to learn how to deal with I'm not dealing with a damn thing. I'm not dealing with your ex in my life. I'm not dealing with my wife sitting up at happy hour with no other man. You want to go to happy hour with him? Cat your ass down there. But you will not do it as my wife. Uh No more than I can go do it as your husband. Man, I can't go in here and tell this crazy woman I'm married to. I'm finna go to happy hour a few times a month with some ex I got. What? What? You got to be kidding me. And for all y'all out there, a woman ought to be able to have friends. You can have all the friends you want. You just can't have all them friends and a husband. (laughs) See, you're going to get all the damn buddies you want. Matter of fact, you ain't got to miss no more happy hour. (laughs) You ain't got to miss that one. Matter of fact, you can up it. Jealous much? A few times a month. You can carry your ass down there daily, happy hour every day. Happy the whole damn hour. I don't know what you're going to do about them other 23. So enjoy yourself at that damn happy hour. I wish you would be sitting up here talking to Steve Harvey that you finna do this. I'm 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 not dealing with a damn thing. And that stops today. Now call this punk ass one more time. Call his punk ass one more time. And you're sitting up here talking about you, my, well, you finna be X. I leave in a hobby. I got two ex wives. You think I won't? <laughs> really, Steve? Well, hell, let's get real with it. That's being real. With it. No, he's, he's being oh, All right, listen, we got to get out of here. Uh, you can email us or Instagram us your thoughts on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM, or you can check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up at 46 after the hour, it's National Take Your Dog to Work Day and Ugly Dog Day. So um, we, we got to talk to Jay yeah, about uh, yeah. <laughs> if he has any dogs in his okay. dog stories no, right no. after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so today is the first day of summer and take your dog to work day and ugliest dog day. So Carla and Steve have dogs. So does Tommy. Yes. Junior doesn't have a dog. No, I, don't I don't have, have a dog. dog. Yeah. Um, but uh, Jay, where where are you with this? Do you I, have any dogs? What's these going on? dogs need to be at home or in the yard. I'm not. That's just me. Aww. I know people. I know they're yes, emotional dogs. Yes. I can let these dogs service go. dogs. People, uh-huh. But first of all, you you work in a place. It, it ends up being too many damn dogs. That's what happens. <laughs> what? You know, What's you, the well, you see Jay? one dog, but then it's like. Dogs every damn well, you know. That's, that's that's what happened, you know. You go okay, National Dog Day night. Now everybody got you got dogs bringing dogs. So we just <laughs> now, now it's dogs every damn well. So uh, just, we need to nip this in the bud. Keep your damn dog home. Keep your dog home. Don't bring your dog to work. I, I mean, I go on. You like you leave. I'm gonna go to the office, and you're not in there. The dog sitting in there, and I'm like, I got. I'm like, I, I'm coming to talk to you. The damn dog in there. In there. I'm like, well, where is he? The dog don't know where the hell you at. I'm just, it's just me. I'm, a, I'm just I don't hate dogs. I, I, I would never I like, hurt tell. a dog. I would, I would never do that. I would never tease a dog. It's just, it's just, it's too many damn dogs. You know? that, is, dog. that is a funny visual, though. You go in and talk to your boss, and it's a but dog. Let me tell you what I love chair. to do. I love, this is my favorite thing to do. What, Jay? I love to go down to the where they sell dogs at. Adoption. Oh my, yeah, adoption the, place. The, and I, oh, the and you see the cutest dog yeah. in there. How you doing? Do you want to be adopted today? Would you like to go home with me? Well, guess what? You ain't going. (laughs) That's your favorite thing. Oh, my God. Hey, that scooter. What's going on? Would you like to go home today? I I know. I know. I know. I know. Well, guess what? You ain't going. I hate you. Jay, how is that right on any level, though? But he cracking up over there. <laughs> You're stupid. What's wrong with having a dog, Too many damn dogs. Too many damn dogs.
damn dog. Yeah. I'm a brain fancy up here. Crushing spirit. <laughs> Crushing dog so, spirit. Yeah. If you could, you have a dog, Jay, and walk the dog, you know, and oh, feed no. it, and no. all of that. You wouldn't do that. You didn't have to take it to work, but just take no. care of it. Dogs are part of the family, Jay. Yeah. Not this family. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I I guess we know where Jay stands on dogs. Coming up at the top of the hour, uh, we're going to talk about the first day of summer and the fact that today is the longest day of the year. We'll do that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. First day of summer, guys. Happy summer, everyone. Happy summer, Yay. longest day. The day, the first day. Uh, yeah. First yeah. Day. Longest yeah. day. Longest what day. Mean, of the longest year day. Right now. It's the longest what day, fool. It's just the longest day. <laughs> more, more this, what you mean, mean, longest day? Yeah, just what yeah. it say. More daylight. <laughs> God. Now, now what? Why is we dealing with here? He's, he's, he's a genius. <laughs> what is longest? He's so a so genius. It's, 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 wait, is it so? It, 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 it ain't twenty-four explain. hour day. It's, it it's twenty-five hours. It's the longest daylight day, day boy, day from sunrise to sunset. That's your day. It ain't talking about your night. You know what? How many fact, hours it is him, it? could be 25 hours. How about that? It's 26. Ooh, See, right time. there. Hey, team stupid. Time. Hey, hey, listen to what? me. Dumb and dumber. Listen to me. <laughs> dumb You've and dumber. It. You've had it, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Listen to me, both of y'all. I'm tired of both of y'all. <laughs> listen to me. This does not require discussion. No other radio station is having this conversation. Ain't nobody, this ain't a debate <laughs> at the Why Cooler. This is, the, this is the, the Why Ain't you know Your Damn Business. Because you ain't got nothing to do with it. It's just what it is. Like, it's the it longest it how about, damn how day. How about it's 37 hours? That, how about that? <laughs> damn it. Now you okay, just wait. a day and a half? <laughs> okay, cool. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I don't know why y'all It doesn't mad. matter. I don't know why. Listen to me. Listen to me. It doesn't matter what the two of you say. Today. <laughs> Is the yeah. longest day. Yeah. And how do you know day. that? Because we don't be, because that's what they said. But and you ain't no never measured no day. days before. Well, well, can I, can you, I, all you can do, can all you gotta something? do is measure the day. If you look at today with the time sunrise came up oh, yeah. and when it's gonna set due to the time of the clock, it'll tell you right now that today, according to the axis that the earth spins on and rotates around the sun, that today is the longest day. That's scientifically yeah, proven, and that. your stupid ass is is not a scientist. And you don't even really know. Right. You don't even really know if it's if nope. it goes around the sun. You just Thank taking you. that. Nobody has what. nobody has measured the day how I long the whole what. day is. I tell nobody you what. done that. I, love I tell you, you ain't got what. no day tape. I measure. tell you what. Hey, hey, let me tell y'all something. <laughs> You can't measure time, fools. So let's stop talking about it because it's not an innate object. It's not innate object. Secondly, if this earth ain't rotating around that sun, your ass is going to (laughs) die. That's where we are with this? At death? (laughs) Now we at death. If we, if we ain't sitting on this Because of y'all too stupid ass. I just need to know. I just need to know what the extra part of day, what do we do with that? Because now <laughs> yeah, we are stuck with you more days. You had your go day take your out, extra Jay. day down there to chemo. That's what oh, you going to do with your oh, damn oh, extra oh, day. You're going to get all loot now. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get all loot. Yeah. 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 There's a whole extra couple of hours of day, and I need to know, because I wasn't prepared for right. this. Had- what do we do with these extra That's days? Mo- Day. Give him some suggestions. Today is the day that the Lord has made. On, Let us I rejoice. Rejoice. Yes. Just rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. Mm-hmm. This is the reason I don't like talking to fools. <laughs> Yeah, well, this the reason, right? No, the problem is you don't Can know I what to do with this extra day you Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this Thank extra hour. You, 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 at the ex- end of the hour. I don't hey, know the extra 10 hey, minutes. Hey, hey, I'm not having a problem with the extra day. I'm enjoying it. So is the radio show say. longer? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 Sure yeah. On the don't longest it, day. Let, and let me ask you something, Donnie. Ain't it starting to feel like it to you right now? <laughs> yes, Lord. Because the damn show sure is to me. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, it is. Because we're talking yes, to these two fools way too long. Team Tommy is exhausting yeah. us. They draining us. <laughs> uh, I guess it's all in a day's work then. <laughs> 
Come but on. we can talk about this another day. What? How about that? Oh, yeah, you, you better day us out. You better. So, you better. So we at got the some end extra day of the you. day. <laughs> yes, Come on, guys. Oh, my goodness. All right, listen. Coming up, more music, more ignorance on this stupid show <laughs> at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. What's the longest day? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so, uh, Junior, you have some sports news for us. Uh, Catch us up. What's I know going the on? NBA is over. Oh, yeah. 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 NBA, though. Yeah. But guess what? We still got some more basketball time. I forgot. Oh, Steve J. What we got? What? Big three start this weekend. Oh, nice. Oh, I love Cue the big Q start yeah. season three. Big big three starting off All this right. weekend in Detroit. Yeah, yeah. So Thank you, Q. Happy. We got something to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Ex-NBA players on the court putting out their real basketball. They uh-huh. punch. They fight in this. Love this game right here. Oh, wow. Oh, this is hard here. This ain't, this ain't that soft basketball. Uh-huh. They out here no, playing. No, you know what, man? It really is a great too. league. It is. It really Really, it's really, really good basketball to watch. Three on three is really, really and good And they can basketball. steal ball, too, Steve. They oh, dog, ball. dog, this cat's out there, man. Man, they're going to Atlanta. They're going to be in Brooklyn this season. They going Remember, Chicago. can I tell you something, though, man? You have to really respect the NBA league because have you ever stood next to NBA players? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh they're <laughs> really, really exceptionally tall. Yes. And yeah. if you think you finna just go score like you want to, it's probably <laughs> no, not, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Uh-huh. No, Kobe don't look the same on TV as he do in person. Kobe looks, mm-hmm. he's a, he's intimidating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even the ones you think short. Yeah. Be like, once you see him, like, whoa. Yeah, they're yeah. still very tall. Well, hold right. on, Tommy. Come on, come on, Steve. Make me proud, Steve. I knew when he said it. Probably need to probably need to stay out this conversation. <laughs> we don't have time. <laughs> Alley-oop. <laughs> I'm just saying. (laughs) All right. Coming up, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show uh, at 33 after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys. Time for Ask Steve. This is Steve's favorite segment. We get to ask him questions, and he gets to answer. Uh, our only request, this is another question, is that no, you keep surely, your answer short. You so we get more questions in. Because you waste time with that. <laughs> Why do you hate that so you know, much? He hates <laughs> setup, He hates setup. He does. like that. He All right, Steve. Yes, he does, Jay. <laughs> he does. He can't stand the setup, uh-uh. man. <laughs> All right, Steve, here we go. What's the lame ex- lamest excuse uh, that you've given to get off the phone with someone? Uh-huh. <laughs> I bet Come you on. got a lot of those. Come Shoot, on. Lord have mercy. Oh. The lamest. One of my one of my best ones is that the swimming pool is on fire. What? Literally. <laughs> now, swimming pool. There's uh, a, uh, somebody <laughs> spilled some oil and the swimming pool is on fire. A grease fire. That in the throws pool. people into yes, something. Yes, it does. For real, you got to go. I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's crazy, Steve. Go. All right, come Here's on, Tommy. Here's another one that I like, oh, too. Okay. So lame. Mm. What? <laughs> oh, hell. There's a rat in here. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. That's that a good one, too. <laughs> yeah. I right. get you off the phone. N- tell me, come on. How, how about this? How do you handle people who won't stop talking? Despite, oh, I just, you oh, know, oh, I got You know, that. despite plenty of nonverbal clues. Oh, I ain't got no problem. I just walk off. <laughs> what? Just I walk like off? It. Oh, I just walk off, though. Yeah. Well, they, do they notice? Or they're so uh, busy talking, they don't even notice. Huh? Uh, I, I, I do it while I'm looking at them. <laughs> I give them one last blink. I like that And one. then I turn and walk off. <laughs> I yeah, like that one. I've done that a bunch of times. Parties, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I walks right off. <laughs> You're stupid. Yeah. Come on, come on, Junior. What my kids got? was in my office one day just talking to me, asking me to cry. I got them walked out, went out in the backyard, <laughs> lit a cigar. <laughs> Dad, really? Yeah. yeah. Was... <laughs> walk it off. Come on. All right, uh, other than a plunger, what is something that you need to buy long before you need to use it? Insurance. Yeah. Uh-huh. Insurance. Oh, insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That, that's uh-huh. an insightful answer right yeah. there. That's yeah. Really, that's uh-huh. one of the most mm-hmm. important things you can it do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, coming up, uh, our last break of the day of the week and some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this at 49 after the hour. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, Steve, here we are. Last break of the day. It's been a good Friday, a fun Friday. Long, longest day of the year, first day of summer. Enjoy your summer. <laughs> if we ever get one, right? Oh, it's here. Yeah. Never yeah. yeah. be old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Steve. Yeah? <laughs> I got a text from our affiliate WHUR in uh, D.C., well, saying her, that, yeah, uh, yeah saying uh, for me to let you know that uh, DC News was all a buzz about your closing remarks when you talked about uh, Juneteenth and reparations and all that. Mm-hmm. They said they included in sound bites in their news and local TV. Just you know, wanted to let you know that. Let's let's play the closing remark. You know, um, the Mitch McConnell remark about how he don't see how African Americans should receive any reparations. Mm-hmm. And the reasons he gave were because none of us that are living today was responsible for that back then. Uh, that's an interesting statement to make. You know, they have very selective memory when it comes to doing what's right. And they will, they will remember what they want to remember to stay right. First of all, he said, we've done everything to erase or write our original sin of slavery. He said, we. So what he used was, first of all, the Civil War. I'm not a historian, but I was always taught that the reason we had the Civil War was because the group of Southern states decided that they want to keep slavery, and they didn't care the fact that Abraham Lincoln was up there talking about freeing them. They wasn't having it. They wasn't going with this conversation. So we're going to have Civil War. They don't care about nobody up there talking about, no, we're going to let them go. The next thing he said that they did was to help with slavery was civil rights. Civil rights were not given to us. Civil rights was marched for, boycotted for, walked for, set in for, ran for, died for. What I remember of civil rights trying to get them was watching Bull Connor sick them German shepherds on all them innocent people and hose them down with fire hoses. That's what I remember a lot about civil rights, how we had to fight to be considered equal by so many who didn't want us to be. Then his last example of making a right for slavery was to re- We elected an African-American president. Well, we didn't. A lot of people did, but it wasn't you, Mitch McConnell. So stop saying we like you've been on board with civil rights and the Civil War on the right side of right for this whole time. Because you really I really don't think you have. I don't think you understand. And then he said that he doesn't see how those of us who were not here back then, those couple hundred years ago, should even can be held responsible for that and he doesn't see how we would even know where to start giving out the money to who well let me help you understand something you say that you don't want to be responsible for something that happened i think he said 150 years ago and he said he didn't want to be responsible for that because we weren't there then well, you weren't there when they wrote this Constitution that you love to throw up in everybody's face. You weren't there then. Oh, but I have some vivid remembers, the memories of that, too. Remember when women weren't allowed to, allowed to vote? You know, them was your forefathers had to put that in the Constitution. Do you remember when your forefathers, Mitch McConnell, put in the Constitution that African Americans were three-fifths of a human being? You remember when that was put in there? I had to change that, didn't you? Oh, I forgot, but that whole time you was fighting to make amends for slavery. Yet and still, everything I knew in their power that they was doing was trying to reinvent slavery to make it come in another form. Well, you successfully did that. You made ghettos, and you made ghettos become farm systems for prisons. And you found a way to incarcerate us, which was to enslave us. And then you created unjust laws that incarcerated people of color and women of color at a higher rate than people of non-color. You selected certain poor crimes like rock, crack, cocaine, and you made it more t- 
time than you could if you bought the more expensive drug, which was white powder. So you got less time for having white powder than you did for having the poor drug. But you needed the poor drug into the communities because you needed the farm system to flourish the prison systems. Oh, excuse me. This is the same country that's trying to make right for slavery. Now, there are a lot of great non-African-American people who have done some amazing things against the fight for slavery because we didn't end slavery all by ourselves. We didn't, slavery didn't end simply because black people got tired of being slaves. We was tired the day we got off the boat. I can assure you that was the case. So what has happened over a course of time is there have been some lot of great non-blacks who have aided in their sister Quakers and uh, freedom houses along the way in the Underground Railroad and safe houses and places they could stop and rest and get water and be hidden from. I got that. But we ain't talking about them people. We talking about the elected officials that keep passing the voting rights law that y'all keep have to vote and find out if we should be allowed to vote again or not. That's 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 the America I know. I won't be sitting around me personally waiting on your reparations because I don't think you're going to allow that to happen. Because quietly speaking, I think Mitch McConnell said what a lot of people really feel. And that's why ain't nobody got mad at him yet except us. That's it for today. That's wow, enough. Steve. My closing remark. Drop it. Drop it, Steve. Y'all have a great weekend then. <laughs> Let's yeah. go do that. Yes. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 